Okay, welcome to Simple Pong and Python 3 for Beginners, part 10. And this is where we learn how to simplify our code. Because in the last video, we added an extra ball. We added ball two. And ball two made us really have to double all of our code. And as you probably realize by now, coders do not like to do extra work. We don't like to double up. We don't want to have duplicate code. It is a bad thing, officially. So what we want to do is figure out how to use the same code, or should I say reuse the same code. Okay? And then basically we can have one set of code that does everything for all for each ball. And what I'm going to actually end up doing is I'm going to actually end up adding four balls to this game and seeing what happens. Okay, So let's go ahead and give this a shot. So let's take a look. We have a ball and we have ball two. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually change the name of this ball to ball one. So this is gonna break the entire program, which is okay for now. And then what I'm actually gonna do with this is I'm gonna make a list of balls. So I'm gonna say balls, okay, because there's more than one, equals ball one and ball two. So remember, each ball is a turtle object. It has all of these methods. It has all of these attributes which we've given it. So in this list of balls, we've got a ball here and a ball here. Now I'm being very careful with my, my vocabulary, the words that I'm using. We have a list of balls. We have more than one. We have a ball and another ball. And that's going to come in handy down here. So what I need to do is inside my loop, I'm going to do this for ball in balls. When you see this structure, you need to think to yourself, okay, for each ball in that list, I'm going to do this. And so I'm going to go ahead and move the ball. I don't need ball two because what it's going to do is it's going to start with ball one and that becomes the ball and it's going to do all the code. Then it's going to go again, it's going to do ball two. So each of these balls is going to get its turn. So I'm going to go ahead and indent my border. I'm going to just indent all the code. Oh, actually, maybe I'll just I'll delete the ball two code because I don't need it anymore. That's probably maybe a better way to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and indent the border checking. So that's inside this for ball and balls loop. This is called a for each loop. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing for paddle and ball collisions. Again, I don't need ball two anymore because that same code is going to take care of ball one, then ball two. So I'm going to come down to here. Okay. And again, now I don't have ball, I don't have ball ball, I have ball two. This part's going to be a little bit different. So let me go ahead and just see if it, can I hashtag that out? Yes. I use, uh, on my Mac, I use command question mark to change all those to hashtags. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. Now the, the AI is not going to work anymore, but everything else should work if I did this correctly. Okay, use my arrows. Okay, I missed, the, missed that. Okay. Uh, I'm not very good at this game. Okay, I'll go ahead and test the right player. Okay, I'll test the left player. Okay, so I think it's working basically as we have intended. Okay. So let's review what I did there. I created the balls. I called the first one ball one and ball two. Then I made a list of the balls. And then down here in my while true loop, note the indentation where the for loop is, all this code. And it says for each ball in balls. So it starts out with ball one. So move ball one, blah, 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 blah. So ball becomes ball one. And then ball becomes ball two. So it kind of replaces it. So then do all those things that we did before for each ball. Now, what I can do now, what's great about this code is that I can go ahead and take this and I can go ahead and make a ball three. I can make a ball four. So let's go ahead and do ball three. Okay, now let's go ahead and do ball four. 
And why don't we change the numbers here a little bit? Let's let's make this. Uh, let's do let's do one and one. Make these ones a little slower. And we'll do. Let's see what we got here. So we've got negative two and negative two, negative two and two. And so the bottom should be positive. So let's make that positive one, and let's make this negative one. Okay. And then what I gotta do is just put them into my loop. So you can see using this method, I could have 50 balls there. It wouldn't matter. It's not gonna, it's not gonna change anything. So the only code I need to do is create the balls, and then I can just go ahead and put them into the list. And now my code's done. It does, it's gonna do exactly what I wanted it to do. Let's go ahead and run it. And we'll test it with Okay, you can see. Okay, let's go ahead and give them, let's go give them different colors. Let's uh, I don't want blue. Let's do yellow and let's do red. Okay, and why don't we go ahead and make this one? Let's go ahead and make this one green. Have fun with it. So save and I'm gonna go ahead and run it again. Okay, so. Okay, so you can see how the score is going in and out. It's doing kind of exactly what we expected. So this is kind of a melee version of the game. <laughs> Again, not 100% sure why it keeps uh, speeding up and slowing down. Probably made a mistake somewhere. But uh, yeah, it's kind of a demo here. So I'm gonna close that. It's basically doing what we want it to do, except for now the AI doesn't work. So this is actually a really, really kind of interesting thing. I teach AP Computer Science. And this is one of the standard kind of algorithms that we use in, in, in there to with, with lists and uh, with array lists and things like that. So what I need to do is I need to find the closest ball to the paddle. So I need to figure out which paddle has the highest X coordinate. Okay. So I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna call this, call it closest ball equals balls zero. So I'm gonna just assume that the closest ball is the first ball on the list. Now watch what I do here. For ball in balls, if ball dot x core is greater than the closest ball dot x core. Don't forget your parentheses. Then the closest ball now is the current ball. Okay, let me explain that one more time. We've got four balls in the list. So we're gonna just say, okay, probably the, let's say for example, the first ball is, is the closest ball. We'll just use that as our example. And then we check again all the balls. Now actually, this is a little inefficient. I should start from the second ball, but we'll just keep this, the code very easy here. So for each ball, now if the ball's X coordinate is greater than the current closest ball, that tells us that that ball is closest. So this will go through every single ball and tell us which one is closest. So then all I have to do here now is I can actually just get rid of this code. I only need one set of code. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Oops. Okay, make sure everything's lined up. And this actually, this actually has to go back here. Because I don't wanna do this until it's decided the closest ball first. So first we're gonna decide the closest ball, which is what this section does. And then we're gonna decide, sorry, then the paddle is gonna to move to intercept the closest ball. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that because I'm kinda of getting annoyed by it. Um, retyping everything. So there we go. Oops, I forgot to see. And okay, I'm gonna save that. So again, I only wanna compare paddle B to the closest ball. So let's go ahead and test it and run it and start. Now you can see how it's going after the green ball. Okay, now it's gonna shoot up to the yellow ball. Okay, 
Still following the yellow ball. Okay, now it's coming down the red ball. So you see that's actually pretty good, especially because it can kind of cheat compared to the player. Okay. I can still I can kind of move things up and down. Okay, and that is that. That is how our AI player follows the closest ball, which is quite interesting when you think about it. And so you can see here how if we use a loop, we can add as many balls as we like. We can have one ball, we have two balls, we have three, we have four. As many as we add, this part here will take care of every single one of those balls. Pretty, pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Have a good one. Subscribe for updates.